we flew into San Diego and I asked the manager, could I go home? Because we had an off day. So he said, yeah. So I took some LSD at the airport because I knew where it would hit me. I'd be in my own in my little area and I'd know where to go. So that's how I got to uh, my friend's girlfriend's house. She said, what's wrong with you? I said, I'm high as a Georgia Pine. <laughs> the next day, which I thought was the next day, she told me, you better get up. You got to go pitch. I said, pitch? I pitch tomorrow. Hell, what are you talking about? Because I had got up in the middle of the morning and took some more acid. She grabbed the paper, brought me the sports page, and showed me, boom. I said, oh, wow. What happened to yesterday? <laughs> she said, I don't know, but you better get, you better get to that airport. <laughs> now, this was in the 70s, and Greens was Dexamil. That was uh, the drug of choice back then was a stimulant. Over 90% of major leagues was using decimal when I was playing. And when I got to the game, there was a lady down there in San Diego who used to always have the Bennies for me, Benzedrine, which is another stimulant. I went out to the, in the dugout and reached up because she was standing over the rail. She always stood over the rail and had a pretty little gold pouch. So I got the Bennies, went on back in the clubhouse, took them, the game started and the mist started. Misty rain. So all during the game was a little mist. The opposing team and my teammates, they knew I was high, but they didn't know what I was high on. Cause they, they had no idea what LSD was other than what they see on TV with the hippies. I didn't see the hitters. All I could tell was if they was on the right side or the left side. The catcher put tape on his fingers so I could see the signals. We had a rookie on the team at that particular time named Dave Cash, and he kept saying after the first inning, he said, you got a no-no going, a no-hitter. I said, yeah, right. And I looked. <laughs> then around the fourth inning, he'd say it again, got a no-no going. <laughs> I looked. Yep. But I could also feel the pressure from other players wanting to tell him to shut up. It's a superstition thing where you're not supposed to say nothing if somebody's throwing a no-hitter. There were times when the ball was hit back at me. I jumped because I thought it was coming fast, but the ball was coming slow. Third base would come by and grab the ball and threw somebody out. I never caught a ball from the catcher with two hands because I thought that was a big old ball. And then sometimes it looked small. One time I covered first base and I caught the ball, and I tagged the base all in one motion. I said, ooh, I just made a touchdown. <laughs> I didn't pay no attention to the, to, the, to the score. You know, I'm trying to get the batters out. And I'm throwing a crazy game. I'm hitting people, walking people, throwing balls in the dirt. They're going everywhere. Now we go for the piece de resistance. We move to the bottom of the ninth on a no-hitter, leading 2-0. It was easier to pitch with the LSD because I was so used to medicating myself. That's the way I was dealing with the fear of failure. The fear of losing, the fear of winning. It's just that it was part of the game. You know, you get to the major leagues and you say, I, I got to stay here. What do I need? Everybody in our bullpen is standing and walking around nervously. They want to run and grab Doc. Now, two balls, two strikes, and here's the pitch. Strike free! He got it! Right after him. He got it. Got it. There, Marvin Doc Ellis on a no hitter.